hello dear students i hope you all are doing well so in this session we are going to discuss next topic from your first chapter number system and which is real numbers and their decimal expansion as you already know real numbers are including rational numbers and irrational numbers so if i can say in this session you are going to have a clear idea about what are rational numbers and irrational numbers and after end of this video you will be able to differentiate rational numbers and irrational numbers so let first start with rational numbers here i have taken two examples and we are going to do decimal expansions of this numbers so let's do so first 10 by 3 If I'm going to divide ten by three, first thing three is a nine. I'm getting the remainder as one. If I want to proceed further, I have to place point over here. I can add zero. Again three is a nine. Again one we got as a remainder. Again three is a nine. One. Zero, three, three, zero, nine. So this seems like never-ending process. Every time I'm doing three, three, zero, nine, and every time I I'm getting remainder as one. Let's see what happened in next sum. Here I'm going to do seven by eight. Here dividend is smaller than division. So first I need to place the point. Hence. Eight eight zero sixty four six will remain zero eight seven zero fifty six four zero and eight five zero forty. So this sums ends over here. So if you have noticed in two sums. we have performed this two sums in the sums every time i am dividing the number and i am getting the remainder as one but in this sum this is not happened the sums terminate with the zero remainder over here so as we have noticed in from this two sums one sums we are getting remainder repeating and one sum ends after few step whenever we are doing decimal expansion of rational number we are getting two possibilities first case is that the remainder becomes zero and second case is that the remainder never becomes zero so those rational number that remainder becomes zero will have always terminating decimal expansion those rational number whose remainder never became zero will have non terminating repeating decimal expansion if i am going to write this 10 by 3 is a rational number this remainder this sum remainder never became zero so we can tell this rational number is having non terminating repeating decimal decimal expansion if we are considering this sum this sum ends terminates after some points so this sum this rational number is having terminating decimal expansion so we have concluded like that if we are going to do the decimal expansion of any rational number we are going to get terminating decimal expansion or non terminating repeating decimal expansion if you are seeing this board carefully you will have a clear idea what we are going to get after doing the decimal expansion of any rational number now we have seen the decimal expansion of rational number but now what about the decimal expansion of irrational number so if you are going to do the decimal expansion of irrational number you will always get non terminating non repeating decimal expansion here i have listed two examples you all are knowing under root 2 pi this both are irrational numbers so if we are going to do decimal expansion of under root 2 you will have 1.414213 and so on 
in the case of pi we will have 3.141592652 and so on so here you have noticed this decimal expansion is non terminating that means this is not ending but with that it is not repeating also for example 414213 so any terms is not repeating in this so the decimal expansion of irrational number always you are going to get the result as non terminating non repeating decimal expansion now let us see the decimal expansion of real numbers in one frame as i told in the end of this session you all will be able to differentiate the given number is rational or irrational for that you need to do the decimal expansion of given number and just now we have seen how to do the decimal expansion of rational number and irrational number given real number there is two possibilities the real number can be rational or irrational if i am talking about rational if we are going to do the decimal expansion of rational number there will be two possibilities in case first we are going to get the remainder as zero that means our sum is going to end after some steps second case is that we are going to get the repeating remainder that means our sum will continue as long as we can do so if the sum terminates that means if we are going to get the remainder as zero then we can say like this this given number is rational and that it is having terminating decimal expansion for example 7 by 8 if your number is in second case that means if you are going to get non terminating repeating decimal expansion then you can conclude the given real number is rational number and it is having non terminating repeating decimal expansion for example 1 by 3 we are getting answer as 0.3333 and so on in the case of irrational number always we are going to get non terminating non repeating decimal expansion so here is that there are possibilities to occur a confusion if given number is non if given number is having non terminating decimal expansion so there will be two possibilities again either that number rational or irrational so if non terminating sum is having non repeating terms such as a one point after that 4 1 4 2 here the terms are not repeated so that number you can conclude that this number is irrational number and which is having non terminating non repeating decimal expansion if again the sum is non terminating but it is having repeating terms in that then you can conclude that this sum is having non terminating repeating decimal expansion and this sum is rational number now let's see some examples on the basis of this topic so they have asked to show that 0.333 is equal to 0.3 and repeating can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 so my dear students hence this number is having non terminating repeated repeating decimal expansion so we can write this number in the form of p by q but how we can write that we are going to perform let's suppose x is equal to 0.333 and so on if i want to write this term in the short i can write 0.3 and i can use this symbol that shows this 3 is repeating since here if you have noticed only one term is repeating that is 3 so i am going to multiply both the sides by 10 Why 10? Because only one term is repeating over here. Let's do so. If I'm going to multiply by 10, I will get 10x. 
here 10 multiplied by 0 0.333 and so on 10 multiplied by 0.33 so on will 3.333 and so on this we can write as a 3 plus 0 0.3 and repeating yes but this 0 0.3 and repeated we have supposed as x so i am going to place x in place of 0 0.3 and repeating so it became 3 plus x i am having 10x is equal to 3 plus x if i am going to solve this further if i am going to take x on this side i will have 9x is equal to 3 what we are having last 9x is equal to 3 so x can be written is as 3 by 9 if i am going to divide both the sides by 3 i will get 1 by 3 so we have written this x x we have supposed as 0 0.3 and repeating so you can write this term in the p by q form as 1 by 3 now let's see another example so that 1.272727 and so on in short 1.27 and repeating can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. So as you have noticed this decimal number is having non-terminating repeating decimal expansion that means this is rational number and every rational number can be written in can be written in the form of p by q. Now let us see how you can write this number in the form of p by q. So here I am taking suppose x is equal to 1.27 and repeating. Here how many terms are repeating? 2 terms. So I am going to multiply both the sides by 100. Why 100? Because here 2 terms are repeating. If 3 terms are repeating, then you need to multiply by 1000. If I am doing so, I will get 100x is equal to 127.27 and repeating. If I am going to rewrite 127.27, it can be written as 126 plus 1.27 and repeating. Right, but 1.27 and repeating we have already assumed as x. So I am going to put this x back in this step. So next step I will have 126 plus x. Here it is 100x. So if I am going to take this x this side, I will have 100x minus x is equal to 99x is equal to 126. If I am going to solve further, 99x is equal to 126. If I am going to take this 99 this side, it will come into denominator. So x is equal to 126 by 99. If I am going to write this number in the simplest form, these numbers are having 9 as a common factor. 11 9s are 14 9s are 14 by 11. So x is nothing but our 1.27a and repeating. So in this way you can express 1.27 and repeating in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. I hope you all understood this topic. To get many more educational video about various subjects please subscribe our channel Nirja Education.